let me introduce you to the Pico piano. To make one of these, you'll need a microcontroller, and we're using a Raspberry Pi Pico under four pounds. Um, you need some jumper wires, um, do you want to come in, and a speaker, and at minimum, a few pence worth of resistors. It will work without one of these keyboards. Um, however, if you're interested, we'll show you how to make how we made them. This one's coded in MicroPython, and this one's coded in CircuitPython. We will be showing the code on GitHub. Um, link will be in the description when it's ready. This one that's coded in CircuitPython is even MIDI capable. Let's give you a demo. I just hooked my Pico piano to, to GarageBand on my phone with MIDI um, and I've just let my sister have a little test with it. Here is the working principle. So I've got four resistors connected um, from ground to power in series. So I've got four resistors, so that would be one, two, three, four notes. The more resistors, the more notes. Now, here there'd be the highest voltage. Here there'd be a drop. Here a further drop. And here a further drop. So if we get, I think, my oh, sister... Yeah. My sister's got a good video about that. If you want to go check that out, I think that's the voltage divider video. Um, but if we, on your microcontroller, the plan is if we get your analog pin um, and you connect it um, here, it, that'll be one note. Connect it here, that'll be one note. That's a bit confusing order. And here, that'll be another note. And here, that'll be another note. So um, it will detect the different voltages, which means it'll play a different note. Yeah. We said at minimum, you just need some resistors. So you don't even need a ball or anything. You can just twist or solder um, a string of resistors together. Um, and then you just need an analog pin. And I'll show you what I mean here on the back. We've just got our string of resistors and this is just an analog pin and look. It works the same. It's just that the joins between each resistor, let's take this one for example, it's just connected to one of these keys on the other side here. This perf board is really cheap and you can use these as the keys here. And it's already tin, so if you don't want to go into the depth of making this, you could just use the perf board as a cheap alternative. Just with a bit of improvisation, I'm sure you could come up with something with stuff lying around the house. Probably even better than the things we've created. Maybe with some tin foil or anything lying around the house. How did we manufacture our boards? Well, we got some copper plated boards and we picked up a few of these. Um, and ordinarily we would print out our design and iron them on. However, our printer is broken, so we couldn't do that. So we decided to use um, sticky notes and try that out, and we did some designs. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we got. So we cut. So we cut them out. Um, some of these stickers and stuck them on, and then we put them in our etching solution, which we use ferric chloride. Um, we also heard that sharpie might work, so we didn't really believe that. But if you come here. Um, all of these are stickers. You can see there's an X there, a heart there. Um, there. And that's done in Sharpie. So surpri we were surprised that that worked. We were surprised that anything really worked here. But after we found out that worked, after leaving it in the... Um, ferric chloride. The yeah, ferric solution. chloride. We decided to do a bigger scale in Sharpie. On this one, we used um, the stickers and it looked 
um, worked out pretty well. In and fact, then these, sorry. In fact, this was the best one to be done. Um, the stickers weren't the best. Um, and on these three, we used the Sharpie. Um, still not as good as the sticker one. Um, however, we can do more intricate patterns. See, we've got writing here, and it's also a lot quicker, so we can easier. get it, yeah, easier to do. Um, my brother also tried tinning um, his one with some lead-free solder. Um, however, these two we just chemically um, tinned. On the first one, we were really pleased with it, but our resistor placement wasn't particularly good. Um, on our second one, our resistor work, our resistor placement was a bit better. Um, and on this one, we decided to go bigger and we're trying to put all of our circuitry on the back of the board. You even have our Pico on there, maybe an audio jack. We're not too sure yet. Uh, we're probably going to manufacture a pen rather than just this wire. Maybe even a solder end tip. In the next video, we'll take you step by step through the code. In the previous video, um, this is where this idea came from, so do check that out. But for now, we're going to take you through the manufacturing process. I've just got a test here. You can see I've got some stickers to see if they'll stay and some permanent marker to see if they'll stay as well. I've got an X here to see if that'll stay on. And all I'm going to do is just bathe this with some acid and hopefully it'll rub out everything that's not been covered. This is how it turned out. After bathing in the acid, you can see the stickers have blocked the acid from getting through. So that's good. Here. You can see it's still copper. The heart and the X shape that I did in permanent marker has stayed. So did the circle over here. So overall it went pretty well, I think. Um, I've drawn our designs onto our copper plates and the plan is I'm gonna put them in some ferric chloride and it's gonna erode away all the copper that's showing and hopefully everything underneath the Sharpie will be protected. And of course, I'm gonna be wearing goggles and um, some gloves. And if you are a child, if you're not an, a grown up, then you'd be quite crazy not to have some form of adult supervision around because you're probably not going to be a maker for long if you're using a substance like ferric chloride or ferric chloride. My brother's just pouring it on now, making sure it's all covered. Is that enough? Okay, cool. I'm about to take it out of the ferric chloride, so there you go. That looks like it's done. Pour it away and then I'm gonna put it here and I'm just gonna give it a bit of a rinse. I don't think I need to film that, do I? Here is the result. In here I've got some tin solution, which ordinarily wouldn't bond with my copper, but we've also got some firea in here, which should do the trick. Um so just zoom in on the copper, see if you can see that perfectly. We're gonna dip it in now, but just partially so then we can see the contrast. So can you get the copper? Um, one sec. Cool, I've got it. Let's go. Okay, let's dip it in. Ooh, now I'm just going to go at this gently. Now, while I'm doing this, be safe. Use protective equipment like goggles, um, gloves. Um, also, if you're a child, not an adult, I would suggest getting a child. And most importantly, getting an adult, not a child. Oh, God, getting, a, <laughs> getting an adult. Most importantly, don't do it on your parents' walnut dining table which we would never dream of doing do this outside and if not a highly ventilated place so i'm just going to bring this out now oh whoa. wow that looks so nice okay looks like it's done the can job can you can you get it good um one sec we can see the contrast do you want to bring it one sec. i can't bring it over <laughs> um that looks really good one sec is that okay okay yep see the contrast okay okay so i'm just going to dip it and just drop it in here um, just push it in. Okay, I'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay. It's time to take it out. Let's just search for it in here for a bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, right, yes. Just scoop it up. Cool. Try not to scrape any of the stuff off. Off. 
thank you so much for watching this video and remember in our next video we will explain the code and the circuit so make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so then you'll know when that video is out <laughs> and if you did like this video please give it a big thumbs up and yeah bye have a good day bye